What's up? Hi, ah, it's it's your boy. Welcome to you. Welcome to my new show. Uh, it's uh, a grown man in his mid forties lays in a bed, lays in a Sonic the Hedgehog bed to tell you the latest about Sonic Frontiers. Um, a lot of big news in the Sonic world. Uh, they made two, they made movies since last time. They made two movies. They made two of them. Um, and um, I haven't seen them, but uh, I played Sonic Frontiers and uh, there's two parts to the game that we can talk about. I maybe already kind of talked a little bit about the open zone uh, that everyone's heard, you know, so much about. Um, yeah, I don't know. I played, I played it. It was running on a PC, you know, like a windowed mode, and it just the fidelity looked a little off, and the gameplay itself seemed a little kind of all over the place in terms of like, you know, you kind of have the Sonic moves of like a drop dash, and you can run up walls, and you can, you know, do this and that, but like it's this largely open, empty area. Um, with kind of little puzzles strewn about them and some occasional enemies and like some of the puzzles were like there are three buttons and you have to hit all three of them and then you get some some kind of you know collectible or currency or gears or you know or or, or whatever um and then there were some that were like okay there's a button you step on and then there's a bunch of squares in like, like a disco dance floor kind of thing and they light up and you have to walk on the lit up squares. There was one, you know, you, where you kind of run up a wall. That was kind of cool because you're running up a wall and you get uh, the ability to do something called a side loop, which leaves like a trail behind you. You hold the button down, it's like triangle on a PlayStation controller, I'm pretty sure. Um, and, um, you know, you can use that to like basically run a circle around something or multiple somethings. Then when you let off, those things take damage or they're activated in the case of like buttons or something. So some of the puzzles are like, oh, I've got to hit three buttons at the same time. However, I'm gonna, am I going to do that? The Psy Loop is your friend there. There's a skill tree. I believe the Psy Loop is kind of like one of the first skill type things you get in the, uh, in the game. It's, uh, I don't know, the game doesn't really get a great sense of speed out in those open areas, but they do have spots where it's like their platform is hanging in the air, so you're kind of meant to jump f f amongst them and, you know, occasionally use your homing attack to to make your way over there. I found myself falling a lot uh, and falling to my death, um, which didn't seem like there was any real punishment there. It just said, like, try again, you know, or whatever. I don't know if that's just something for the demo build that they were showing or, or how that'll work in the final game. Um... You know, it's got loading screens that'll let you kind of test out the moves. Actually, I think that was the most fun I had with it was like, it was almost like a fighting game training mode for combos where it was like, do this. And it was like a big long string of buttons. And I was like, oh, okay, I need to do here and then do an air dash to collect these rings and then do a drop dash to be down here to collect these rings and then do all this stuff. To, and then it was like, you did good. Here's a star. And then you move on to the next one. Um, <laughs> that was maybe the the most interesting gameplay uh, in my time with it, the combat in those open zones, you know, you're fighting all these, you know, I don't know, they look like rejects from Fantasy Star Online 1's, like, dark zone, like the, the darkers, whatever they, um, the fourth, the fourth area, where they would just kind of, like, get, like, all pointy and whatever, they're like, oh, they're twisted demons, but, uh, but we can only handle so many polygons, so they've just got points for hands, or, or whatever, um, like that type of vibe on the the enemy creatures, which seemed kind of kind of weird. I don't know. Um, the first one of those you fight, you know, it's just like you kind of just mash your homing attack button, and then they start to take a swing, and then you have to jump away before the swing connects, and then you do it all over again. Um, you know, you can also kind of run a circle around them with the side loop, and some in some enemies' cases that will like open them up for further attack. Like there was one enemy just out in the world that had like a shield thing, and then you would do the run around. Um, you know, play the harmonica for a while, do the run around, uh, and then, and then beat on them from there. And, uh, you know, that, that was what it was. 
So the, the thing, the new thing that we can talk about as of today is the, the thing that's like, it's the real game, I guess. Or I, I don't know. It depends on your perspective. Um, you collect these gears when you beat enemies. Um, when you beat kind of larger encounters, you'll collect these gears and you can take them to portals and put the gears in the portals. And when you do that, it opens up the ability to teleport into, um, you know, a behind the back ass, sonic ass, 3D ass, 3D sonic ass level. Um, and so it's a full on load into a different area. It's not a big open world game. It's like, here's this zone, go in here, run hella fast, collect hella rings, do the homing attack to hit a bumper and have it go boing, 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 boing. You know, all the Sonic adventure types, you know, everything they've done uh, since they started making 3D Sonic games. Like that, that style of game is in there. Um, now I know what you're asking. You're going to ask, well, how is it? Is that stuff awesome? And I'm going to tell you, no, because it's never been awesome. That stuff's never been good. At best, it was flashy in Sonic Adventure 1 when there was that big whale. And you're like, whoa. It's, it's never, like those, those games have never, so, so I'm, I'm perhaps not the right person to evaluate that particular aspect of the game. Um, but yeah, that part of it was just kind of like, oh, you turned it into a regular Sonic game here. Uh, and I saw one of those. I, I unlocked a second one. And then when I went into that portal, it said like, thanks for playing. And that was like the end of the demo. Um, but, you know, my understanding is you'll have multiple levels like that. They're like Cyber World or whatever they're calling them. Um, and you get a letter ranking when you beat those levels and you go through that stuff. And it, uh, it is what it is. There's someone knocking at my door. I've got to get up and put on a shirt. All right, sorry, that was, that was, they were coming, they, the guys came to get the dehumidifiers out of my house, and, uh, and so that got done. Uh, where were we? Yeah, so these 3D Sonic levels, a little more colorful, you know, you're riding rails, you're doing homing attacks on enemies to get places, you're going high, you're going low, behind the back Sonic, uh, I'm gonna say same as it's ever been, I guess I would say, um, but, you know, I'm sure people with a lot more experience in those 3D Sonic games would maybe break it down a little bit differently. Um, but to my, so that that's, you know, look. A lot of people online have talked a lot of mess about Sonic Frontiers, you know? And um, I get it, like the footage that got out there um, did not look awesome. And I don't think that that open zone, open worldy kind of stuff that they're doing, I don't necessarily think that that's going to make for an amazing video game. But as someone who, again, thinks that they have not been making amazing Sonic video games, let's say ever, um, you know, at least they're trying something different and I can appreciate that. Um, and so part of me wants to see where that open zone stuff goes, like what it looks like later on, because playing it at the beginning of the game where it feels like more like a tutorial than anything else is just like, I don't, you know, no, it, it was not, it was not complicated. It was not uh, especially exciting um, and all that sort of stuff, but at least it was a little bit different. You know, at least it was like intriguing. You're like, okay, I don't know. There's like a story here where they're calling Sonic key, the key and Amy is trapped and we got to go save her. And then she mentions Tails and, you know, so there's like other stuff like that going on and you're like, okay, well, what is, what's happening in the world here? Um, and then you unlock these portals and it's like, here's 3D Sonic. And, and that's the part where I'm just like, I don't want to, I don't want to do that. I don't think that's fun. I don't think it's ever been fun. Um, and, and so, so maybe that's exciting. I don't know if the, like, because they say like, oh, you know, like the, the, the comments from the developers have been like, well, they're all they're They haven't seen the full. And I wonder if this is supposed to be the thing that they're like, boom, here it is. It's a Sonic game. And people are supposed to rejoice and go, yay, it's a Sonic game. I, I don't know that it's going to work out that way. Um, and I don't know if they have more surprises up their sleeve. You'd like to think so, right? That's like, oh, okay, there's a whole lot more going on here. Um, but I, I don't know that that's the case or not. I don't know, uh, what really, what their, um, what their plan is for the final product because it was a pretty limited demo. Um, but you do kind of see those two halves of the game, 
um, forming some kind of cohesive whole of like, okay, I've got to get out here into this open area and like figure stuff out to unlock these portals so that I can then go in here. And it even there's like a line of dialogue that's just like, you can go in the cyber world over and over again to do until you master it, like kind of implying that you want to go and get, you know, complete all the objectives in each area, which is like, one was like a letter grade. I want to say there's like one for collecting a certain number of rings. I, I forget what the exact things were, but it was like, you know, there was like kind of a checklist of like very generic uh, tasks to complete in in the cyber world, the cyber level, the, the, the more traditional 3D Sonic kind of behind the back thing. Um, and so, yeah, they had a line of dialogue saying like, you can replay these levels over and over again. It was just like, oh, well, boy, thanks. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Like it, it's it's intriguing in the way that like at least it's something different. And you know when I remember hearing from someone before the game got um, before the game got announced, I remember hearing from someone who had seen it, um, seen some kind of version of it running or whatever, saying like, hey, you know what? This is like it's something different. Like there's a bit of like you know Shadow of the Colossus or you know just kind of like like name dropping that in there because there there is like a larger a big big ass enemy that I did see at one point in that open area that I wasn't quite sure how to tackle uh, so I just drew a circle around its foot and then it took damage <laughs> and um, and then I think I got a gear for doing that in fact um, so yeah um, I will say that like when they did when they did finally show that trailer hearing you know after hearing like oh yeah this is actually really cool like watching that trailer I was like I don't know that I agree that this it looks really cool um but I haven't seen the gameplay demo so maybe and so seeing it in action I'm like okay I mm. there's a piece there there's a piece there where you go like you know there's there's they're trying to do something else right I, I think that's the that's the intriguing part for me is just like okay yeah no try and do something bigger and I don't, I don't know you know in, in in retrospect when this game comes out and people try to look back on it will they go like oh like this was them trying to learn lessons from like Breath of the Wild and trying to turn a Sonic game into something like that because they've got these open areas and they've got these little puzzle you know it's not like shrine nothing I did in there was the complexity of a Breath of the Wild shrine but there's a bit of a dotted line in terms of just like okay there's they've kind of peppered these things around the world you don't even go into an area it's just like there on the field so it's, it's it's a it's a very flimsy comparison but i'm trying to like put it into some kind of context for people um that maybe i could see some some kind of dotted line to like that shrine concept a little bit but i i don't it's a weak one uh so don't hang your hat on that don't go like oh man it's like breath of the wild you know because it, it, it's not breath of the wild it's not shadow of the colossus at least in what i saw right i mean who knows like Maybe once you get out of the first hour, it's this whole crazy thing um, in terms of the open the open zone and then, you know, more 3D levels to, or more traditional 3D Sonic levels to, to check out. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's it's weird. Like, I, I'm, I feel like I'm caught in the middle because I think the people that are just like looking at the footage out there and going like, we've got to start a petition to delay it. I'm like, no, it's not, mm, I don't think it looks that bad. But also I'm like, I don't know, like, don't, don't take this as me saying that I think it looks great uh, or that it will be, be a good game because I'm not sure. And in some ways that's exciting, right? It's, it's exciting to come over and go, like, I don't know. I don't know. At least I could say that, you know, like I personally, like, I don't want to play a game that has that style of 3D Sonic level in it, the behind the back, like run here, get the, you know. I, I, don't, I don't like doing that. I just don't like doing that. Um, and I never have, ever, um, when it comes to Sonic games. So, uh, so yeah, in conclusion, I, I think I want to see more, which is a crazy thing to say, but that's where I'm at with it. I, I want to know what else they've got going on um, and, and see where it all goes. Um, but, you know, if, if the game is really just kind of those two pieces, that open zone with not a lot going on, and then the more focused kind of platformy behind the back gameplay, if that's, if that is Sonic Frontiers, I don't, uh, I don't, 
I don't think that's going to necessarily hit for people. There will be some people for whom the news that there's a traditional Sonic game kind of lurking there, that that will be received well, but I wonder if there's going to be enough of that to satisfy those people. That's another kind of big question, is like, if there's eight of those, then that's probably not enough. If there's 50 of them, then maybe, I, you know. Um, it's a weird game. And that's, there, there's, there's, there's cool, there, that's kind of cool in a sick way, is that at least it's a weird game. Um, and that there's some bit of it to talk about that is at least somewhat unknown and potentially somewhat intriguing. Because I think if they were just like, hey, we're making another 3D Sonic game, then it's like, okay, well, the sickos are getting what they want again, and I'm over here going, like, I don't know, I don't know, I don't want to do this. But, you know, I, I, the more I think about it, the more I've thought about it over the last, I guess this is really the last year or two, it has been that realization of just like, and Sonic Origins coming out, I think, kind of underscored this a little bit for me that, like, I, those games aren't good and maybe they never were. I just needed something back then uh, that looked good. The, the thing that Sonic Origins coming out reminded me of is how amazing those soundtracks are, and I like the graphical style of Sonic 1 and 2 um, an awful lot, and I, I, so I, just, I love the look of those games. I love the way they sound, and I think the gameplay is terrible. At least Sonic Origins adds the spin dash and drop dash, so you can kind of, like you know, boost your way out of some situations that were just kind of, like, unpleasant to deal with in the original Sonic game, of just like, oh, I lost all my momentum, and I'm on this hill, and now I need to, I'm, I'm just, like, painfully slowly walking up this hill, and it's like, oh, God, and then I push down, whoops, I roll back to the left, and, oh, um, that stuff's just not good, I don't know, Labyrinth Zone is just not, not good, you know, um, but the music's good, I, I don't know, it, Sonic the Hedgehog is bad. Sonic Frontiers, uh, the jury is out because uh, the game's not done. Um, and there's at least a couple of things in here that made me go like, oh, I would like to know more. I would like to know more. And so w when it comes out in the fall, I will uh, it's, I will check it out. I will, I will find out a little bit more about it, I suppose. That's where I'm at with it. Uh, and you should trust me because I'm a man in my mid-40s laying in my Sonic the Hedgehog bed. So if you can't trust me on all things Sonic, maybe it's you that has the problem. That's, that's the catchphrase around here when we're talking Sonic the Hedgehog. Maybe it's you that has the problem. We'll be back next time with a man in his mid-40s discusses Sonic the Hedgehog from his Sonic the Hedgehog bed. I've been your host, Thanks for tuning in. Bye.